Welcome back to the RO Podcast. It's your good friend here, Misty Wilson, the wife of co-founder Heath Wilson. And we're taking a little twist here. Today, I am with none other than also your good friend, Joey <laughs> Odom. And I wish that I was clever enough right now to have made something as dynamic and amazing mm. as you do for people when you have them on. <laughs> I think it might be one of my most favorite things is when you have people on and you just, you've, you know, gone into like how awesome they are. And look, I'm just going to tell you covenant friend, covenant friend, you're awesome. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I'm blushing. Yeah, no, I know I'm it was, I know. I got to admit, it's a little uncomfortable being on this side of the table. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm going to be real honest. It is, very uncomfortable <laughs> being on this side. And now my heart goes out to you every time we do the podcast. Yeah. All right. So what are we doing here? Let's let's, this is, this is yeah. the time everybody's ready for, I wish my husband knew, right? But they're not getting that. This, no, this it month. is, it is a twist this month. This month I have come in here and I have no clue and when I say no clue, like I'm sweating, I have no clue what Joey is about to talk about. And so he has something that he's prepared for me. And right. so women buckle your bootstraps. Let's just hold on for dear life because Joey is about to come at us. All right. I, I'm not going to, I'm not coming at anybody. Okay. First. I'm just going to say, so we've always, as everybody knows, we, we talk once a month. I wish my husband knew and it's where you bring up something that you, that a lot of wives wish a lot of their husbands knew. And we're going to turn the tables this week is I wish my wife knew. Mm. And by the way, and this is hard. This is, <laughs> I know it, it is, it's, you know, coming up with, with something that because this is this topic that we're about to talk about for me is something that we in my marriage, Chris and I have really grown in. Yeah. This is not something that's natural, but the reason why we're talking about it now is because of how good she's gotten at it. And so, but I, we go from the beginning. So I'm going to, with, without any further ado, I wish my wife knew how much weight her words carry. Oh, how much weight her words carry. I'm curious. What is that? You, you had a, you had a visceral reaction there. Yeah. Why does that almost like a little sadness or I know. tell me how that, that strikes you just to begin. You know, women are so wordy. Mm. We're very wordy people. I've noticed that. Yes. And so there's a lot of things, me specifically, that just fly right out of my mouth. <laughs> um, and I think I want to say that I do a good job of lifting Heath up. You know, I, I also think about, you know, the way that I carry myself around him or the way that I face him when he's talking to me, because that's also my words, just mm -hmm. not being said. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I love, love my husband. I always want him to think how important he is. And I think I've said before, like, he's a guy, he's words of affirmation, yeah. also acts of service. And yeah, I mean, I, I I'm ready to talk because I would love to yeah. affirm him more. Well, I love that you just said that. And this is, this is again, Misty had no idea what this was about, but you said it. And it's in fact, you said it on our last podcast as well. You talked about how men are words of affirmation. Mm. You just said it here without having an idea. This is what I'm going to talk about, but it is most men from my observation are really strongly words of affirmation that when it comes to, to the, the five love languages for those who aren't familiar. So the five love languages, most men are words of affirmation and most women aren't True. It, it, in, in this. Again, I'm not, uh, this is overly stereotypical. And so this is a, maybe a guess of mine is that women, it's almost like, show me, you love me, yes. show me get the acts of service or the gifts or the quality time, particularly yes. quality time is big. And I think that women might not understand how much weight their words carry because they're not that weighty to them all the time. To them, it's just words are a little bit cheap. If you really love me, you'll show me, but just telling me that, what does that do for me? And so what you don't, what you may not realize is the good and the bad. It's life and death when yeah. it comes to your husband's ears. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, this makes me really good, feel good because over the weekend, I just, you know, you and Heath have been working out so much right. and I like, well. I seriously complimented his body this oh, weekend. Yeah, I was like, oh go. my gosh, I can tell like the abs are 
popping. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, that yeah. I automatically think back to that. Like, I'm actually like, oh, I'm really glad yeah. that I said that now. <laughs> Sheesh. But it's so true. Like, yeah, I mean, I know for me and, you know, just talking about the whole workout thing, because that's what my mind just went to right. was if, if I had been working out regularly and busting my chops, how much that would mean for Heath to notice and to say something about it. And just knowing that that's really important to him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know that I always think that much about how he values how I see him mm -hmm. and he doesn't know how I see him unless I tell him. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, he has no idea otherwise. Yeah. This was, I, I'm while you're, while you're, before you turn it off, ladies, if you think this doesn't apply to you, I, I suspect that a lot of women would think like, Oh, he doesn't care what I say. Oh, he doesn't care. We're thinking about their husbands. I'm just telling you that most likely your husband does. And so Kristen, I previewed this for her, the topic I told her we were going to talk about this and she was shocked. She goes, wait, really? Hmm. She was so surprised. Yeah. We've been married almost 20 years. She right. was so surprised that her words carried that much weight. Yeah. And I bet you a lot of women out there, and this is maybe the first homework assignment is ask your, your husbands or, or even how about this, even try, like, just try and see what happens when you observe something yeah. of them, just what that does yeah. for them. So it's, I think that a lot of women don't necessarily realize how weighty their words are. Even you said that out of the, you know, you said about his, you know, his abs looking great yeah. Yeah. and you probably weren't intending to do anything other than just say something you noticed when right. that probably went, by the way, we haven't worked out in a couple of weeks and we did this morning, yeah. which might be a direct result of, of him thinking, well, if Misty thinks I look good, I got to get after it. Right. Him. Yeah. Right. It, you know, I'm also, I think when I responded with sadness is because my immediate question to myself was, I know he's words of affirmation mm. and how often do I affirm him? Yeah. And I would say that I'm not enough. I, mm. I don't enough. And I, and I know how much it means to him. Yeah. Uh, it means a lot to our boys, you yeah. know, and so you, you guys are just, you're just grown up boys. Wow. And so, yeah, I, I, had, I hadn't even thought so funny. I hadn't even, this is just you turning on me. I, I haven't even thought of this topic as it relates to Harrison, my son and, and yeah. the things that I, it's just so easy to nitpick and want them in the name of, oh, they need to hear, they need to be corrected. Yeah, is it, are you really, or is it, or you just versus saying those things that build them up? Yes. So Kristen wasn't, Kristen is great at this. She was not always great at this. And again, for her also, she is a, she was gifts when we got married and in terms of love languages, she's um, now she's quality time, but she's never, and, and she's never really been words of affirmation. It's probably climbing just a little bit, but I thought about, and I have her permission to, to tell this story, but we were very newly married. We were probably a year into our marriage and it was a Sunday afternoon and I don't even remember what the circumstance was, but she had asked me to do something or something like that. And maybe I didn't immediately get to it. And she said, you are lazy. Oh. And I, this is, I've done this one time in our marriage, Misty. I just walked out of the door and I left. Never done that before. And, it, oh. it, and credit to my pastor at the time, a guy named Jeff Voth in Tulsa. Um, I called, I called Jeff and I said, what do I do? I, I don't know what to do. This was the first big one. And he said, he said, it is okay. It's perfectly okay for you to say to her, I love you. I want you to be honest with me, but you, you can't talk to me like that oh, in, in, in so many words. I mean, not, yeah, not in right, a domineering right. way, but just like, that's not an okay way to talk to me. Yeah. And so that was a, that was a really, we talk about this when we laugh about it now, but it was a, it was a very hard one at the time. Yeah. And what was interesting as I was reflecting on that is it didn't make me not lazy. Maybe I was lazy at the time. I don't know. It didn't make, it just got me mad. Sure. It didn't lead to any meaningful change long-term. It was in Kristen at the time. She goes, she told me later, she goes, yeah, I was trying to get under your skin. Ooh. She was, she was trying, she was trying to, to, to get to me, but it was one of those where it, but, it, but, the, but the interesting thing was it, it really did nothing other than just made me feel like crap. And so Do you it, still hear those words in your head. Does that come back to you? I think for, I think for years it did. Yeah. I think, I think I had to, what I had to really do. And the reason why Misty is I had to, 
I had to be really careful not to let that soak into my identity. Yeah. I think it would have been really easy for that to soak into my identity and for me to identify myself as being lazy. Yeah. I know I'm not lazy. I, I just, right. I was able to take that, that accusation and process it and not let it, not let me process it as truth. Yeah. And that's really hard by the way. She, she, uh, that day she could have very easily made me into a lazy husband yeah. just by calling me that. Right. So yeah. it, it, it's, that's a great question. Man, I, it you doesn't came anymore. out with the power of words and, you know, I guess, fortunately for me, I thought about the affirming words, like the yeah. positive, like yeah. how you speak into your spouse and to hear you talk about the negative, which I think in a lot of marriages is extremely unfortunately common Yeah. to tell your husband or your wife what you're thinking mm. in a negative way. And it's not okay for you to tell anybody something mean, <laughs> right. much less the person that you adore and you're planning on spending the rest of your life with, yeah. like <laughs> right. definitely don't talk down to that person. Yeah. So yeah. And even when you said what Kristen said, and she's such a sweetheart, um, yeah, to think about her saying that mm. and and knowing her the way I know her and how much I value the things she says and the things she does. Because when she speaks, I listen. Yeah. And so I can see how that would have mm. cut. Yeah. And how would you know what? Thank the good Lord you walked out the door. Right. That could have really gone bad. It, I mean, I can I can just imagine what words might have come out of you. Yeah at that point. And then, yeah, no, oh. it, and it's, I, I will to her credit, I can't think of another example in our marriage where she has put a label like that. I actually think like to her credit, she really did that day say like, okay, that's not okay. So to like, it's like the, like, it's a one thing to say you're doing this versus you are this, that you are this in a negative sense. I don't, I can't imagine a time when she's done that, when she's done that again. So that was actually a very helpful yeah. uh, lesson in our marriage. But I'll, I'll go to the positive side of it too. She, this was for years, my biggest, I would say my biggest weakness with respect to our family was always patience, just impatience, impatience, impatience. And it was, and I, I have taken years and years and years to work on it. And I've, I've felt like I've made some progress and she told me this is actually getting me a little choked up, even think about it. But this was just, this was just a couple months ago. She said, she said, I just want you to know, you have been so patient with the kids. Mm. And and when she said have been so patient, she didn't mean like that, that weekend. It was like an acknowledgement of that journey. She knew that it was something that was, um, that had been a real challenge for me. Yeah. And she was looking at over a period of years, like you are patient with the kids. Like you are, wow. you, not only you are being patient, but you are a patient dad. And it was one of those things, Misty, where I now just the, the other side, I now, I, I identify myself as a patient dad. Isn't that amazing? Like, yeah, I, I yeah. believe. And so what if, if I identify myself as a patient dad, what am I going to do? I'm going to do things That's that right. a patient dad would so do. So true. And it was so powerful. And it wasn't, it was, it was like deliberate the way she said it. It's almost like the way you set the stage for a conversation. It can yeah. go such a long way. I mean, even think about this, like we, we talked about this in the last episode, if you're um, being out of balance and in, in your partnership and saying, Hey, can I talk to you about something that's yeah. important to me? What if we shocked our spouses? Hey, can I talk to you about something? And then we sit down, made an observation over, you're just so patient with the kids. Oh, I'm totally going to do this before this podcast goes out. <laughs> I'm going to hit Heath with it. <laughs> hey, honey, why don't you come sit down and let me tell you all the great things about you? I'm so doing it. <laughs> Just shock them, right? Thank you, Joey. I but, appreciate it. Because those are yeah. those are moments where you you know it's you're going oh, in for correction, and how man. about you did instead of going in for correction, you would go in for affirmation. I know. Oh, It'd be yeah. so huge. So it, it was. There's. I mean, I was thinking about it. there is nothing that makes me stand taller and prouder than, than something specific that Kristen notes about me. But I, I was thinking you referenced this a second ago. I think about the female brain overgeneralizing. I give the caveat sure. every time, yeah. but women's brains are like connecting machines. Women are connecting. This means this, this has implications on this and this and this and this and this. And as a result, and this is just the natural condition of the human brain, human brain is always looking for ways to make things better. 
Yes. And as a result, it's always looking for things that can be made better. In other words, for, for things that, that need to need to improve. And so women's minds, they're always on a search and destroy mission for things to correct. Yeah. And in doing that, how can things be made better? How it typically comes out, not only in a marriage, but also with our kids. And now you have me thinking about it, just saying that a second ago, that comes out in nagging. Yes. And, and I would say that nagging is, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, to me, it's just saying whatever you're thinking in the moment. It's just saying whatever you're thinking in the moment. Yes. Is that? Well, it, you know, it's even worse than that, really. I think, I think nagging comes from something that's you've been thinking about. Mm. And I think that's even worse because I mean, yes, you, you are actually right. Like it is just coming out with what you're saying, but at the same time, like it gets far deeper than yeah. that, which I think is why nagging is so annoying and it's so hurtful. And it's why whoever is being nagged, you shut down. That's right. You don't even hear the nagging. Yeah. Like it doesn't count. It yeah. counts for nothing. Mm. So, oh yeah. Nagging's the worst. Well, I, I like that you said that because it's, as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about how misguided of an approach it is. It's just, if you've never thought about nagging and all genders nag, by the way, yes, um, well, we're all equal opportunity naggers that we, that it just doesn't work. And I think about how I talk to my kids and I'm just thinking about, it, I do nag them and I do get on same and just to know what's my goal here. If, if my goal is actual change, mm. then this isn't going to work. Wow. So it's just, so let's just begin with nagging is a dumb. Let's, yeah. Is that, is that nagging is dumb. Nagging is dumb. Is that the takeaway? I think so. Nagging, nagging is, is dumb. dumb. <laughs> and the other thing is, or it is exactly what you said. So one, either it's either it's misguided, either you don't know that it's dumb or it is just venting. It's just the thing that, that, and, and if it's, if it's just venting, that means that you don't actually care about improvement. You're just getting whatever you want off your oh, chest. Oh man, you don't ew. care, right? That's so true. Like, are you like? And let, let's take the let's take the lazy the example from that story. Was was the goal there for Kristen saying that? Was that her to make me not lazy, or was it for it just to? She didn't care. She just wanted to get it off her chest, right? Right. It's just it was just to get it off your chest, and mm. and it, I, I thought about what you said. Like you have reached a boiling point. And your and your message just gets lost in the method. Your your message is is totally gone. All all that I've heard is you repeating the same thing you've said a hundred times. Right. All I've heard is you taking a shot at me. And so it doesn't work. So it's not only is it dumb or it's just venting and that actually you don't really want to you don't really want improvement. Right. Yeah, you just want to be mean. Yeah. You just kinda of want to and be And I know we're not thinking that. We're mm -hmm. not thinking intentionally like I'm just gonna be mean to my husband today. Yeah. Or, so, or back over. Yeah. Let me ask you. Yeah. Because I can think of possibly some of my friends, um, especially a good friend of mine who is now divorced. Mm -hmm. If you, if, if, hmm. if the wife is in a position where in that moment, I don't know what, what positive feedback to give you. Like I yeah. have this feeling of such negativity towards you that you've been doing the same thing over and over and over. And I've really tried to be loving, haven't really affirmed you necessarily, but I've tried to be loving and patient with it. And I'm looking at you and I'm trying to think of a way to affirm you in some way, but I have gotten to a point in the marriage mm. that I'm so discouraged. Yeah. I can't find the positive to say, where do I start? Yeah. By the way, yeah, please do continue to poke holes in this. This is yeah. like this and ask questions about it. I mean, I, I think that this, again, we're firm believers. It's never too late, but the earlier, the better. And so this, this would be, this is super helpful, like early as a rhythm in, mm. in that. And it's when you get to that point specific to nagging, my, my thought would be like, that's, that to me is just putting gas on a fire right there. Yeah. Like the nagging will only make it worse. Sure. Like there's, there's a truly, it makes it even more combustible at that time when you're at such a point where the only lens you see through is a negative lens. It's, it's, that's, I mean, that's obviously therapy time. That's counseling time to be able to get back and get some rules that you can get back on kind of the right track for. So I would say, particularly when it comes to nagging, 
And again, I mean, even as I'm thinking, I'm thinking about your question out loud. I would say that this conversation, as we're talking about it, probably applies to relatively healthy relationships. Yeah. This is this is taking you from from eighty percent to ninety percent, or ninety percent to ninety five, ninety five, ninety eight. So this is this is not necessarily to take somebody who's at twenty percent, right. who's, who's their their you know gas tank is on e. Yeah. This is this is more than that, but it's probably my guess is it's a history of getting this wrong. Right. It's a history of getting this wrong that, that's led you to that point. Well, yeah, and the vicious cycle, like, you know, if if the wife's been nagging and takes the husband even further yeah. into not doing, drives him even deeper into doing what he wants to do and, you know, just shuts out the nagging. I, as you're talking again, and I asked the question, I thought, okay, well, how would I do this, you know? the way that I try to think about things like we are children of God. Okay. And then our children are children of us. So how would you talk to a child? Yeah. And I don't want to be demeaning to the man at all, but how would you talk to a child? And I think if my husband had been doing something repeatedly where I'm looking at him, like I really have nothing positive to say to you right yeah. now, like at all. I think my approach would be to go to him and say, how can we be more encouraging to one another? Yeah. I feel like we're in just a negative cycle right now. And mm. I want to encourage you because I love you. And how can, how can I help you? How can I encourage you better? So good. And then give him some, some ideas on how you feel like you might need to be encouraged mm. in some other areas. Um, well, what, what I like about that is what you're telling him by saying, how can I encourage you? You're saying, and this ties back to to the the partnership discussion from last month, was was I'm on your side, right? Hey, I'm on. Hey, I want you to know I'm on your team. Yeah. And when you do that, what is what does that create? Again, it may be too far gone, right? But if the if your spouse knows, hey, I'm on your team. I'm here to make you, you know, for the good of you. What do you need? You're totally right. And what a good way to start. By the way, that's not a self. That's a that's not an easy approach. No, that's not self-serving that. I mean, ultimately it probably is it's for the good of the team, but it's, it's a real risk you're taking. It is. And if you've been hurt, you've been shut down, you've been shot down. That's, that's really, that's a, that's another limb you're walking out on that may be a little scary yeah. if it doesn't get reciprocated. Yeah. I can definitely think of, you know, if, if you're a woman and you just feel like you're constantly discouraged or maybe he's talking down to you. And so that's why you're sort of like, I don't even know how to encourage him because he's yeah. not encouraging me. Mm. I can see how you'd put yourself in a really vulnerable situation where when you ask him that question, he may come at you really mean yeah. and say even more. Mm. So you're right. I mean, we are definitely talking to people that, you know, it's 85% like, you know, we're, yeah. we're on the right track, yeah. but I do, I, definitely want, this is surely a topic for those that are in the depths right now, yeah. that there is a way out and there is a way to keep talking about yeah. it. So I, I, by the way, if you ask the question you said, and how can I encourage you? Yeah. You better be ready to, to respond. Nope. You, you better be ready to listen. That's the, that's the I other need a pen thing. and paper. Yeah. Okay. That's the other, I mean, don't you think that's the other yeah. one. If, if you were, if he came and asked you, Hey, what can I do for you? That would be great this weekend. And you said it and then he didn't do it. Oh, it's like, what do you, why did you even ask? Yeah. Right. And yeah. so it's, and especially if you knew that it, the question was really so that you would ask the same, same one of him. That's where it <laughs> right. gets even, it actually can't <laughs> yeah, no. be, it actually, don't, don't approach it yeah, that way, <laughs> which makes it, that's where it gets really hard. Again, that's why there needs to be some health there that, you know, you can, you can sure. rely on. Um, but that is, that's a dangerous question to ask yeah. because of the, the answer you might get and you just have to be. You got to be willing to yeah. do whatever he's about to say. It, yeah. I mean, For the, yeah, relatively. Within reason, right, right. Yeah. right. And, and again, it's not even necessarily agreeing. It's just listening and hearing. So I was, thinking about, I was thinking about the antithesis of nagging, where nagging is in the moment. It's venting. It's a boil. You've reached a boiling point. And I was thinking what, what could be the opposite of nagging? Because when you nag, you obviously want something to change. And so I thought about the concept of correction as an antithesis to nagging where the opposite of nagging is not staying silent. The opposite of nagging, I believe, is correcting. Because no no good partner wants their wants their spouse to, you know, suffocate the things that they're feeling inside. 
And so I was thinking about if, if nagging is saying something in the moment, correction is saying something in the right moment. Mm. You like that? I do. I just came up with that. It just on a whim. <laughs> I'm right? best. Yeah, amazing, I, right? I love it. Look at you, <laughs> smarty. Oh, <laughs> Talk about acting like so a kid. Quick. Just want a little pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> but the, and, and to me, the right moment is, and again, it's funny how like last month's conversation and this really dovetailing yeah. together so perfectly because it's, what are those moments where that foundation of love is there? And this, again, I think you would hear, so let's think of a date night. Things are going great. You've had a glass of wine, the entrees come out. You're really, you're connected. You're connecting. Yeah. It, the natural tendency would be, the, the natural tendency would be, Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, rock the boat. Rock We're the having boat a good here. night, but that's the time. Like that yeah, is the yeah. time to bring it up. I believe. And again, I think so. I, I think, I think that's the only time at least that you are taking a risk and maybe you do ruin the date night, but, but I think the way you go about it, that shifts from, that shifts from, I'm, I'm trying to vent here to I'm coming at this from a place of love. Right. And you, at that moment, you have a really good foundation and then this, the other, the other side of that is it's giving you time to, to think through, is this actually that important to me? Wow. How important is this? Where a nag is just that thing you're popping off. Oh, you always leave your, your socks there. Right. You know, where, and if that really is a thing, that's probably, Hey, I know it sounds small. And I mean, even like a touch on the arm that goes a long way. Right. That, that, well, and I hate to interrupt you, Please but do. I'm like, I'm, I'm on this now where n nagging about something that's really, you know, not even important. So maybe we think about that first, like, because I think that nagging, just like anger comes from hurt that had yeah. nowhere to go. Yeah. Right. Nagging could also come from a place of there's like a deeper hurt mm -hmm. than just your socks being on the floor. It could be a lot more than that. Wow. Just because if, let's just say it's the socks on the floor all the time, every time. And you know that I'm picking up your socks and I'm not your mom. <laughs> so it's a lack of respect that I'm feeling. Mm. And so I, I think that's where, if I'm thinking about when I nag, it comes from a feeling that I'm feeling disrespected. And so I need to think about that first because I, I need to figure out where the problem is, the depths of the yeah. problem, because the nagging is just that like constant, you know, tap that's just really annoying, mm. but it's deeper than just the socks. And you're doing, see, I, 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 the, I'm not your mom line. What did that's worth drilling in on too. I've, I, I bet a, a lot of women have said that, or at least thought that I know I've heard it from Kristen when right. I've shocker left my socks on the ground, so that <laughs> real life example, but it is that, and that comes from, that comes from, that's not just something you say, that is something that's really in your depths oh, no. that you don't want to be. And there's probably a lot of dynamic there that goes into it. And so when you, let's say nag at the, the socks on the floor, it actually deprives your partner of the opportunity to understand you because mm. I want to know that. Yeah. I want to know. And by the way, I see this with Gianna. I see this with my daughter. Like she'll, she'll come, she'll come guns blazing sometimes. <laughs> and it's just like, they, she, there was one the other day, she's going to high school next year and she came home. She goes, I am not taking honors math. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden it, it, what is the first thing I thought? Oh yeah, you no, are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> which by the way, I'd never thought about honors math before, but right. just because she came guns blazing, <laughs> as opposed to her coming and saying, Hey, I'm looking at my class schedule and I think I have a pretty full load. I'm going to be playing, you know, sports for high school next year. I don't really know what to do. I'm feeling like I may be a little overwhelmed. I'm thinking I'm a little uncomfortable doing this. That changes the entire thing. And so, yeah. and I'm hoping that our kids can have the opportunity to know, to trust the other person enough to know that I can handle your feelings. It, you're, I can handle those and your feelings are valid yeah. and I want to hear them. But I think that by, by not taking a, a step back to, like you said, kind of analyze what that, why that's important to you. We're not giving our partners an opportunity to understand us. Right. Oh man. Well, as you talked about Gianna, like I think about teenage girls, sometimes teenage boys too, but I think about teenage girls, you know, 
poisonous snakes when they're babies, they're even more poisonous mm. than the adult snake. Huh. And it's because with their venom, they don't quite know the limitation of how much venom to put in their victim. So when you say Gianna's like oh coming gosh. at you guns a blazing, like, yes, yeah, she is because her little hormones and emotions are like running <laughs> wild. And it's just like busting out of her because she hasn't learned how to like contain them yet. Oh my gosh. So it made me just think of a baby viper. What a perfect, yeah, She's perfect just a baby analogy. viper. It's so true. You know, it's so true. She'll learn how to, how to tame the sting. I think. I want you to challenge me on this. I believe that and I'm, I'm speaking to to wives here and i think this actually works both ways i think that wives for the most part it's gonna be an overgeneralization i think you can create the husband you want with the words you use so wh what i mean by that is if you want a patient husband it's looking for those moments where he's patient and then commenting noticing it oh, you you know what i loved oh my gosh i loved it tonight when you were so patient with it. it would have been really easy i just i just think that's you know heck even throw this at him i just think it's sexy when you're when you're yeah. when you're patient with the kids yes and and watch him go to the floor and just sit there lovingly with that child for like four hours because he's gonna be like she thinks i'm sexy <laughs> i'm in i'm in so yeah because as you're saying that i take it on the reverse and i think wouldn't it be so Oh man, words. Woo, right back mm. to where you said, because like if the husband comes to me and says, I really appreciate how much you do this, it would make me want to continue it that much right. more. It would. Yeah. So yeah. I, well, I even I even noted I even noted exactly what you said. You know, it feels like we plan these out, but it's it, it feel like there's some truth here we're hitting on because we both have said this. I even wrote in my notes here. If you want a man who works out, comment when you see his biceps getting a little bigger. Right. And and that what do you? That's just gonna want him to go. He's just gonna want to go get more fit. Yeah. And if it's something, so it's two things. It's one, maybe the if it's something that's important to you as a wife commenting on that. But if you know, it's something that he, it's important to him. If you know, he's been going on, let's say, let's even think of somebody who's like, who's like very much overweight, for example, and they've been doing walks for right. a few months. Hey, gosh, it's, that's paying off. Right. Well, that's great. Yeah. And I think you can begin to create that men are, we have very simple brains and you can, <laughs> even if we know you're doing it, it doesn't really no, matter. It still, still helps. Absolutely, it does. but even if we, even if we know what yeah. you're doing, like we know. But if you say my bicep, I know. Better, come on, I have noticed your biceps getting a, a lot, lot of bigger. people are saying that. I know. Right? A lot of people are it's saying it's really that. been out there these days. <laughs> yeah, people are talking. But it's so true. And one thing that we talked last time, uh, two times ago, we talked about the about um, wives making dinner and how important it is to feel valued mm -hmm. for the husband that goes and cleans up the kitchen afterwards. Just, and again, you're going to feel in a way I, I'm, I'm thinking through, I want you to actually tell me what you think about this. You don't want to feel like you're the mom. And right. so you don't want to like powder their little tushy whenever they do right. any, any little thing. Actually. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I am very curious about this. You don't want to baby your husband in this way, like, oh, that was so good when you did that. But yeah. but at the same time, if you want to, if you want the clean kitchen at the end of the day, hey, it just helps me so much when you clean the yeah. kitchen. Does that require a swallowing of pride? It does. Tell me about that a little bit. It does. Um, yeah. For example, and I, I thought about my feeling when I first came into the kitchen uh, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday morning, I took Reese shopping for a prom dress. And so we were out for, you know, three, four hours. And when I came back, like our house has been a war zone <laughs> for a week or more because we are just going, going, going. And I get home and oh my word, the kitchen is sparkling. Mm. Like it was so clean. It was so, so clean. It was so beautiful. And I had to tell Heath, thank you. Like it was obvious. I mean, mm -hmm. if I didn't, that just would have been yeah. weird and mean. Like it was so obvious how clean it was and just the gratitude that I had. And I, I gave him a thank you, but it really should, I think should have been more. Hmm. Um, 
And as right when we were talking about this right here and you're like, you know, how does it feel? Like, do you you swallowing your pride? Like when I think about it later, I think, well, he did the job that I should have done. Hmm. So I think women tend to Hmm. think that way as well, which is not okay for us to do that. Women. So, yes, I think that some women, if the job is done, there's this this pride thing. Well, you know, well, I can do it by myself because I always do. Yeah. Or, or well, like, he should have oh, done it anyway. Yeah, like oh, he you, should yeah. be doing that. So you do like both ways. You just have to like take your emotions and set them to the side and do the right thing for that other person. Hmm. And, and And again, I think it's. You, J- Justin Whitmill early, and who is just a brilliant author, he he talks about the the concept of rebuke and encouragement, specifically within within friendships, and he talks about how encouragement, which I've never thought about this way, is just pointing out something in someone that you think they should continue doing. Yeah, it's just pointing out, and and for in a marriage, if you want them to continue doing those things, and let's say you did, I have a tendency when I clean the kitchen to clean it ninety two percent of the way. We call one of our kids ninety nine. <laughs> 99%. They've been doing 7% better so, than me. So close. <laughs> so, so it's like, and, and what would be, what, what would be, and Kristen's so good about this is it's so demotivating if I were mm. to have done 92%. By the way, I don't even see the other 8%. I think 92% to me looks like 100. Yeah. And so, but it's, a, it's so demotivating. Like, oh, were you not going to do, were, oh, were you not going to wipe this part of the counter? It would mm. be so crushing. Oh, boy. It would just, it yeah. was like, oh, well, I, I mean, I didn't do it for thanks, but it, that kind of feels crappy. Yeah. Well, and also in, in my example of this weekend where Heath cleaned, he was just immaculate and, you know, I have organized chaos in my kitchen. I know where all of my papers are that need to be signed and need to be done and sent off and mailed away. And I know where all of that stuff is. So when I come home and it's all gone, I think a tendency for some women might automatically be, well, where did you put the papers that I, that I had? I had those there on purpose. I had everything laid out just perfectly. Hmm. I think we need to refrain from doing things like that. If you want for your spouse to help you, then don't nag on the little parts that the 17% that he didn't do. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, just get over it later. Ask him, Hey honey, yeah. Where did you put those papers? And it's such a good, it, it, this is where I has, it's where I'm going back and forth in my mind, but I'm, I'm telling it. So maybe as I tell you this, I am talking about it from my perspective and I understand why there'd be some pushback to this, but I'm telling you how to get the most out of me as a husband yeah. is this approach. And I think a lot of husbands go in this way. So let's, so the, the, the papers example, that is a later time you're sitting right. after dinner. You're just like, Hey, thank you for cleaning that. Hey, when it, it means so much to me, gosh, I know how crazy it's been. Hey, wh- just a quick request. When you do that, it's, I've noticed that sometimes you have a tendency to, to, to ignore that part or you don't do the kitchen table part. You don't wipe that down or you move my paper. Sometimes when you're doing that, do you mind, you know what I mean? Like you can go about it delicately, yeah. which I know you should think like, why do I have to explain how to clean a kitchen? Right. But I'm just, but if you if your goal actually is effectiveness, I think that's the best way. Yes, I do too. Yeah. I need a lot of hand holding. I know. And it's okay. (laughs) We know y'all do. We do. We We know that, (laughs) which is why this conversation is really good because I, I do, I need to be more affirming to my husband. Yeah. It's this whole cycle of, of things. You know, if I scratch your back, you scratch my back. We're both adults. We both came into this marriage because we loved each other. Yeah. Because we valued one another. And so if that's starting to go to the wayside, which it often does because that's just natural, just pick it back up again. I I remember this. I remember this when I was in seventh grade, my English teacher, Miss Walker at Jinx Central Middle School, Jinx, Oklahoma. She, we listened to this, um, every morning we listened to Zig Ziglar. I don't know if you remember Zig Ziglar. He'd give these little stories, these little two minute quips of, of stories that were encouragements for the day. And he talked about the, the picture of hell where you would have, everybody was sitting at a, at a dining table with 
food laid out in front of them and they had these spoons taped to their arms that went two feet beyond their arms. And so as a result, they couldn't turn and get the spoons in their mouths. They had all this food, but they couldn't, they couldn't get that food in their mouths because they couldn't turn the spoon is too long to get in their mouths. Yeah. You get that visual. Uh, yeah. And so then there was a picture of heaven and people still had the spoons on their arms sticking two feet out. But what they were doing, they were feeding the person across the table from them. Uh, and so, isn't that great? Oh my gosh. So we still, and it's, and this is the same thing in a marriage yeah. is that it takes, you said, scratch, you know, the danger in wanting to scratch your partner's back is not being sure if they're going to scratch I your know. back. I know. But if you can just abandon it and you can just, you can just start by scratching their back. And if they scratch your back, great. If not, yeah. that's, that's fine. You know, that's not, that's not great yeah. as well, but you have to put yourself out there yeah. and it does, it requires this level of, of openness to rejection and it's, and it's hard to do. And even in the next concept that may be hard for people, and this goes for both spouses is this, and this is from your sweet husband, Heath, he talked about this idea of overthinking. No one has ever been overthinked oh, enough. And I thought, so what if we, what if we're, is we're nagging, we're overthinking things all the time. So what if we shift it from overthinking to overthinking? Oh, I love it. Right. I love, oh, okay. Yeah. I from, love that. From the mouth of your brilliant husband. It's, we're overthinking all the things that are going wrong and instead of overthinking. And I bet you, if we started overthinking, then we wouldn't have to overthink as much. Okay. Listen, <laughs> that, that's going in the depths of my brain and I love it. I really do love that. It's so true. Yeah. I think too, like if we've gotten, you know, because we have to remember it took years to get to this point of, you know, feeling like we're not getting our back scratched enough or that we need to scratch the other one's back more. So it took years to get here. You know, I, I think about the woman who starts affirming the husband and it's weeks and weeks and weeks yeah. and nothing's coming from it. It takes years to have gotten where we are. Mm. It's going to take a while to get back. Yeah, that's right to Absolutely. where we want to be. So it is, it's a constant, it's a constant conversation with one another. It's just being real with the other one, taking time away, getting rid of the distractions yeah. um, and looking at one another and talking about it like humans treat the yeah. other one like a human being. Yeah, that's right. And, and this, this is an aside, but when you get in, when you get into those conversations, and maybe this is just an, an entirely different, I wish my wife knew, or even I wish my husband knew when you're getting into that conversation, when you're in that moment, and this is for both sides, this is for everybody. There's nothing more catastrophic to that moment than a, a pickup of the phone from your partner, yeah. that moment of vulnerability. I just want to tell you that, that, and I, you know, I call it death by a thousand glances. The intimacy oh. in our marriage is being is being eroded by this death by a thousand glances. So if I'm opening up, it is not easy for anybody to open up. It's not easy for men to open up and be really open and open themselves up to rejection. But I can tell you when on the other side of the table, no matter what it is, it could be so important is just to say, is that glance and it just kills the moment. And it's I, so true. And it's, it's so it's, true. I want to encourage everybody. If, if you, even if it's, whether it's a bit or not, this is where I think, again, let me put my phone down. Six most powerful words in a marriage or in a relationship is just going and getting that out of the way first. Then you're not tempted all along the way to go back to look at your phone. So you feel the buzz and look at it, but if it's gone, but, but that will kill that. And so I, I want to encourage everybody that it will wear down and eventually you're going to find your spouse is not opening up anymore. Yeah. Because they just know when I do that, I can't really trust the other person on the other side because I know that it's been the phone snub every time. So yeah. to me, that there's nothing that can be more catastrophic than that. And we got to flee as much as we can this death by a thousand glances. Yeah, so true. So I already know my takeaway yeah. that I'm going with. I'm 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 going to go home tonight. I want to talk to Heath and say, how can I encourage you more? How can I affirm you more? What's something that you're doing right now that you want me to notice mm. that I haven't? Because if I'm not noticing and you want it, I love you enough and I care about you enough. I want to notice. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I haven't, yeah. but I want to notice that in you. That's my takeaway that I'm going to go home with tonight. Mm. But you started this. What's the takeaway mm that you want to give all of us women that you 
Which, uh, by the way, I love that you just said that. If you can, and I think what you just what you just described is an indication of a very healthy relationship. To be able to ask to be spoon fed that, mm -hmm. what a great thing to ask, and it, you just never know sometimes yeah. like what what is important to the other person. You know, for, for me, it was. I think it's very important just as a guideline when you're when you're giving a word of affirmation, if you want to give that the weight of your words behind something, I would encourage people to be very specific in those words. Yeah. So it's one thing it's there's a difference between saying, oh, you're awesome. That doesn't mean much. You're a great dad. That does mean more. Which is how we started yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. When I was represent when I was telling and you're awesome. Okay. Let's and you're just, awesome. Let's yes, just yeah. continue. Joey. Yeah, that was, that was I my, see what you're saying. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. That, that meant nothing okay. to me. Go ahead. Um, Sorry to interrupt. So you're on versus, Hey, you're a great dad. That's still good. Versus I see how great of a dad you are when you play outside with the kids, when you go tuck the kids in, I can see how, how great of a dad when you do. So if you can find that the more specific you can give a piece of feedback, that's when it becomes more and more meaningful. This is a revelation for me. It's really good. It, and by the way, your great dad is awesome to hear. It is definitely another thing that very specific moment, whatever yes. those things are. And that goes, I think that goes for both because what that shows the other person is you really do notice me. Right. And, and by the way, this is, you said notice early on and you may not have realized it, but this is, this comes back to all of this comes back to a lifestyle of notice. Yes. Not coincidentally, the term RO means to right. notice, but that's what it is. We yeah. want people to live a lifestyle of notice. And so if I can notice they're doing that and you can go specifically with them. That's going to, that's going to go away. So, or that's going to, that's going to continue to perpetuate. I would also encourage people don't make things up. So don't go, don't go. Oh, yeah. that, that's meaningless. And I want you to exactly what you said. It's verbalize just what you notice. You noticed Heath's, you know, you know, washerboard abs. That's right. And it wasn't, you didn't make it up. You just noticed it. So I would encourage everybody as you see anything, you know, see something, say something. If you see something, just verbalize it. Yeah. I think that's, so for me, it would do, it was exactly what, what you, what you said. It's, it's this week for everybody. It's what's the one thing just, can you notice one thing? I think we can build up a muscle here and we can do this over time. This can be just a lifestyle. It can become a daily thing it can become a morning and night thing. But just for this week, just one thing, can you notice something and then verbalize it? Don't assume the other person knows that you've noticed. And again, I think in doing that, you can create the spouse that you want by encouraging the things that you're seeing them doing. I love it. It's good, right? It's really good. It's just, and it's so freaking basic. It's, it's, I, I feel like it, it's such a dumb, dumb talking about it because I'm not great at this, no. and, but it's such low hanging fruit. I know. Well, we just get lost in the everyday, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's when, after, if you're getting lost in the everyday, so many days, so many months and so many years, like this does, yeah. it falls away. And you just a little reminder, a little nudge yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. Take us home. Yeah. I love this. Joey, thank you so much. I love well, did I love being on the other side? I'm not really sure. Like I said, I was pretty sweaty in the beginning and I still am now, but I really appreciate like you just being honest and um, just coming to me and kind of reversing the roles yeah. here so that we can think about it as women. And because we do love our husbands and we do want for you guys to, to feel loved and be held high because that's ultimately how we feel. Mm -hmm. So thank you for just being honest. And I love, love these times with you. I do too. You crushed it. Thanks. Thank you.